One minute warning. Well, good afternoon. As we look back over the past few months at the heroic efforts of our frontline workers, at the hundreds of businesses who stepped up, at the thousands of volunteers who put up their hand to help, we should all feel very proud. I've never been more proud to be a Canadian than at this very moment in Ontario's history. And Canada Day gives us a chance to celebrate the extraordinary actions of these heroic people, our neighbours, our friends, our fellow Canadians. The challenges we have faced together over the past few months have only made us stronger. We've been put to the test as a province and as a country, and we're able to rise to the occasion. Thanks to the collective efforts of the people of Ontario, the province is reopening and people are getting back to work. We delivered $17 billion in immediate relief for families, supports for businesses, and funding for health care. We've expanded testing and contact tracing, hitting new daily record of over 30,000 tests in a day, with over 98% coming back negative. We're one of the leading provinces in clinical trials and research to find vaccines, treatments, and rapid testing methods for COVID-19. We have the best and the brightest minds right here in Ontario. We have the hardest working people you can find anywhere. We mobilized our manufacturing might to make the PPE and equipment we need to help our frontline workers fight COVID-19 because we don't have to rely on other countries anymore. We can make anything right here on Canadian soil, right here on Ontario. We have the best of the best. My friends, there are still great challenges ahead of us, but we live in the greatest province, in the greatest country in the entire world, and nothing is going to stop us. We will come back with vengeance, stronger and more prosperous than ever before. And to show our thanks to the people of Ontario and celebrate this national holiday in true Canadian style, we're giving everyone a chance to explore our great province. Ontario Parks will be offering free day use at all provincial parks across the province, from north to south, from east to west. And we're also allowing free fishing for the whole family starting this Saturday, July the 4th. Numerous attractions across Ontario have planned special virtual events or events with physical distancing measures to celebrate Ontario's culture and artistic excellence. And as we all take a well-deserved break tomorrow to celebrate this great country, I'd just like to remind everyone to stay safe. Wishing everyone a very happy and safe Canada Day. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario and God bless the greatest country in the world. Thank you. I'll pass it over to Minister York now. Thank you very much, uh, Premier. We have all spent a lot of time inside this spring as people across Ontario have done their part to help stop the spread. So as we celebrate Canada Day, we are offering free day use tomorrow to make it easier for families from across the province to enjoy the green spaces and other recreational activities that our Ontario parks have to offer. To help ensure a safe, enjoyable visit to our parks, we're continuing to take measures to prevent overcrowding, enhance cleaning of high-touch services, and promote physical distancing. Capacity will be limited at some of our more popular parks, so I do encourage you to arrive early. You can visit OntarioParks.com or Ontario Parks social media channels to check the status of your local provincial park and what services are available. Ministry officers will also be present to provide information, 
assist with emergencies, and enforce provincial park rules and regulations. So when you're visiting our parks, be responsible. Keep following public health advice, including social, physical distancing, and keep at least two meters from others. And come prepared with hand sanitizer, extra water, soap, and other supplies. I'd also like to give thanks to my colleague, Minister Yakabuski. Families looking for another affordable and low-risk way to enjoy Ontario's world-class lakes and rivers can take advantage of an additional week of free family fishing. It's a great way to get out this month and support the province's tourism industry. For two weeks, July 4th to the 19th, Ontario residents of all ages can fish in Ontario without having to purchase a license or carry an outdoors cart. It's been a very long spring, but it's time to celebrate Canada Day and everything that makes our country great. Whether you're visiting a park, spending time with family and friends, or staying home tomorrow, happy Canada Day, everyone. I'll now pass it over to Minister McLeod. Thank you, Premier, and thank you, Minister Urich. The past few months have had a devastating impact on Ontario's heritage, sport, tourism, and culture industries. COVID-19 has tested us as Ontarians, but our creators, athletes, artists, and community builders continue to bring out the best in us. Over the past four months, and certainly over the past two weeks, as I've traveled the province, I've seen our $75 billion sectors overcome adversity to bring the power of music, art, and culture into our homes. This Canada Day will be different, but our government remains committed to fueling the spectacular double bottom line driven by our creative and cultural sectors. It's why we're proud to continue to invest more than $1.8 million in community festivals and events that celebrate our diverse Canadian culture so that we'll be able to come together again when it is safe to do so. In the meantime, I invite you to explore all that makes our province unique this Canada Day. Numerous Ontario attractions within my ministry have special social distancing experiences and events planned for July 1st, including the McMichael Gallery, which will be showcasing video highlights of their Canadian art collection. The Niagara Parks Commission, which will be hosting a virtual event that showcases the best of Niagara's artists, including Tim Hicks, Spencer Burton, and the Great Lake Swimmers. The St. Lawrence Parks Commission is pleased to welcome back guests beginning tomorrow to their Fort Henry and Upper Canada Village attractions. Science North will be holding a festivity unlike any other, featuring multicultural entertainment, science exhibits, and other fun activities for kids. And Destination Ontario has curated a music playlist of Ontario's amazing talent, including those featured at last night's Juno Awards. There is so much to be proud of and to celebrate this Canada Day at www.ontario.ca backslash Canada Day. Meanwhile, I'll continue to keep traveling across our great province to show everyone that we offer the world in one province. Happy Canada Day, Ontario. Okay, we'll go to the phone line for questions. First question. First question. Your first question comes from Jason Chapman with 640 Toronto. Please go ahead. Very good. Thanks, and uh, thanks for the uh, Canada Day wishes. Yeah, thank you. You know, Jason. I'm asking this question because we're talking about all the entertainment stuff, and I've got kids crawling all over me, and I've had parents in my neighborhood ask me about this. Yeah. Lots of things are opening. Playground equipment in the province is still off limits. I'm wondering why and if there's a timeline to reopen playground equipment to kids. Lots of the tape has come down, Premier, and there's confusion again. Is there a plan as part of phase two to reopen that equipment? I'll pass that over to Minister Elliott. Thank you. Well, we're certainly looking at what's safe for everyone, what's safe for children. Playground equipment has been uh, more difficult because there are uh, little people climbing on it. There are, it's very difficult to disinfect it on a regular basis, but it is something that we are considering for the next stage in our reopening as we move from stage two to stage three. There will be many other considerations of other things that will be brought in, but the opening of children's playgrounds is certainly one of the um, items that are under consideration for that. 
But no timeline right now. I have another follow-up, but no timeline at this point by the end of the summer or by the time school starts? No timeline as yet. We're still waiting to see the results from the Stage 2 opening. We need about another week of data to understand if there's anything in particular that's causing outbreaks. Um, so far as, uh, as far as Stage 2 is concerned, it, it's looking very good, but we still need another week's data to really inform the situation and then decisions will be made about the opening of Stage 3. Okay, the only other follow-up I have, and I'm sure it'll be asked again, is, is obviously uh, mayors from Peel and Toronto this morning announced that uh, masks will likely, the uh, council vote still has to happen in Toronto, that masks will be mandatory indoors. The province balked on a request to make that mandatory across the province. Can you further explain why you didn't want to make it just a provincial mandate for the next several months? Well, I've always uh, said, I refer, let's start off with the golden rule. Um, if you're in uh, large groups, wear a mask, wear a face covering of, of some sort and, uh, and practice social distancing. Um, so that's, that's the golden rule, but uh, each region uh, has the authority to make their own rules and a province this size, uh, I encourage it. And I encourage uh, and uh, compliment the, the regions that are doing it, be it Toronto and Peel. But Toronto and Peel is different than Kenora Rainy River. It's, uh, you know, apples and oranges. So each uh, public health uh, area will have the authority to, to put in uh, either two ways. Either they do it through Section 22 of the Health Act or they do it through the bylaw and go to council, which Toronto's done. Toronto's uh, going to council and they're voted on it. So I, I think it's good. I encourage them to do that. Next question. Your next question comes from Dave Bellicello with Windsor Star. Please go ahead. Hi, Dave. Hi, Premier. How are you today? I'm doing well. Uh, my, question, uh, my question for you today is, last week you indicated uh, migrant workers in the Kingsville Leamington area, they would be allowed to go back to work uh, if they tested positive but had no symptoms. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, the uh, medical officer of health in Windsor today, indicated he has uh, decided not to allow those workers uh, back into the workplace and there to self-isolate. Just wondering if you had any problems with that decision or, or any comment. No, that, that's the choice of Dr. Ahmed. Uh, he's been doing a good job, and, and if the, the cases, which we've seen on one farm, uh, 175 or 177 cases, uh, maybe uh, that's going to be his decision. In other, other situations, he might be a little more flexible, but uh, I understand where he's coming from. Follow up. Thank you. No, thanks. Thank you. Okay, next question. Your next question comes from David Naylor with TSN. Please go ahead. David. Uh, Premier, I, uh, uh, happy Canada Day in advance. Happy Canada Day. Um, the, um, the province has welcomed uh, the opportunity of, of having an NHL hub here and the opportunity for the Blue Jays to play regular season games here. What is its appetite to be considered as a potential hub for the Canadian Football League if it goes ahead and plays this year? And have there been any discussions in that regard with the league? Well, I'm going to hand this over to Minister McLeod. I, I uh, haven't talked to the CFL. Uh, I've talked to the uh, NHL. I've talked to Major League ba Baseball. But they're the only two that I've talked to, so I'll pass it over to Minister McLeod. Thank you very much, Premier. I'm having regular discussions with all of our professional sports uh, teams, as well as CFL Commissioner Randy Ambrosi. Uh, we met uh, over the last couple of weeks, as well as with the Red Blacks, Tie Cats, and uh, in continued conversations with MLSC with respect to uh, the Raptors, um, uh, the Leafs as a hub city, and of course uh, with the CFL. So uh, earlier today, I had the opportunity to meet with my federal counterpart, Stefan Gibault. Uh, to talk about uh, Major League Baseball as well as uh, our ongoing discussions about the CFL. Um, we want to make sure that each one of these uh, organizations, if they do choose to play here, have uh, stringent and safe uh, health and safety protocols in place, uh, that those rigors uh, will be uh, um, approved by both the local uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health as well as our Provincial Chief Medical Officer of Health, I will say this. Um, we, have, uh, we were one of the first jurisdictions in North America to open up for um, our high-performance athletes 
athletes, so our Canadian Olympians in Ontario have been training uh, for almost a month now, and we continue to work uh, with the NBA uh, for the Raptors training facility as well as the Canadian Elite Basketball League. Um, so these conversations are ongoing, uh, but again, we will not put the health and safety of Ontarians at risk, um, but we are looking at uh, 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 robust protocols that are in place uh, with each of the leagues. Um, I don't know if would a hub, would, is a hub is something that's come up in your conversations with the Canadian Football League for Ontario? Uh, absolutely, they have uh, they have discussed uh, possibly going uh, to Hamilton or the Burlington area, and uh, and I, I don't think any option is off the table. We're right now working with them, as you know, they have a substantial request uh, financially in with the federal government. Uh, and last week, uh, the uh, all the sport ministers across the province, across the country, um, who have CFL teams met uh, to see how we can best uh, support the the, uh, the CFL. Obviously. Ontario is very excited to host the Grey Cup next year, the 109th in 2021, and so we want to do everything we possibly can to make them viable, um, and uh, that includes uh, having a conversation with our federal counterparts about how to do that. Next question. Thank you very much, Minister and uh, Premier Ford. That's great. I've heard, I've heard nothing but positive things about the way Minister McLeod has handled uh, many files, but the sports file from amateur to professional sports. So. Minister, you're doing a great job, and everyone's telling me that as well. Next question. Your next question comes from Cynthia Mulligan with City News. Please go ahead. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, Premier. Um, I'm curious again about uh, Stage 3. So the data today has 20 out of 34 regions with zero new cases of COVID-19. And I know in the, particularly in the northern areas, uh, it's been fairly consistent that, that there have been zero cases. Why not open them up sooner by region? They must be screaming for it. Well, every, everyone's uh, quick to scream for it. You know, a lot of phone calls are coming through and, man, I'm even getting lobbied by uh, Santa Claus right now. I, I really am. I, I'm not a word of exaggeration. And I favor one of my favorite spots when my kids were younger is, is Santa's Village. And, uh, you know, Santa Claus is getting restless up there, but he knows the safety of his kids are number one priority. But uh, what a great destination, one of the great destinations. I, again, I'd bring all my, my four girls. So uh, right from Santa to you name it from the, uh, you know, the dog catcher is, is on to me about opening up. But we have to do it safely. And we will do it safely. And we're going to uh, do it in steps as we did before. And I, we just have to continue seeing the, the numbers go in the right direction, which they have. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to the Minister of Health. Uh, she's the Commander-in-Chief at the health table. So I'll, I'll pass this uh, over to the Minister of Health. Well, things have been going quite well in Stage 2, but we're only several weeks into it. We still need the data from about another week to really understand um, if there's cause for any concerns, anything that's causing outbreaks. We have to assess it on a daily basis to understand uh, where we are with it, but we are having discussions about going into the next phase, whether we do it across the province, whether we do it regionally. These are serious discussions that were happening. We have a, a committee dealing with that later on this afternoon, so we're having discussions about where this should happen, uh, of course, when. Everybody wants to know that, and then what will be opening next. So uh, we hope to uh, be able to move into the next stage as soon as possible, but as the Premier says, it's really up to uh, public health. It's to know what the numbers are, to make sure that we see the numbers going down. We had a bit of a spike uh, because of some testing in the Essex area, but we want to make sure that across the province that it's going to be safe for us to move into stage three, so we're taking it very cautiously because we want um, everyone in every part of the province to be uh, safe and healthy. Bella? Thank you. And my next question is for the Premier, and uh, I'm asking on behalf of my colleague, Pam Seidel. Premier, Ontario's courts have held up a ruling that will see midwives receive a 20% retroactive boost in salary. And your government has contested this salary bump in the past. What is your reaction to the court's decision? And will the Ford government pursue further action when it comes to fighting the salary increase? Well, I always respect the courts, but uh, I'm going to pass this over to the Minister of Health again. Thank you. 
Well, first of all, we, we respect very much the incredible work that Ontario's midwives uh, perform, and we do respect the, uh, the, the decision of the court, of course. We uh, are going to review the decision in, in detail, but um, of course the, uh, the court's decision is uh, very important, and uh, we will be reviewing that and um, taking whatever action we need to take, if anything, in the future. Next question. Your next question comes from Randy Roth with CHCH TV. Please go ahead. Hi, Randy. Hi, hi Premier. Um, last Friday, we saw a judge in a high profile case um, deliver his judgment, and under the Emergency Measures Act, he, he an Emergency Act, he, he um, opened it up so that it could be broadcast on live stream. The, the live stream got 20,000 viewers. Is that something that should be held over and expanded after the, the COVID situation is settled? It's interesting. I guess there's a lot of interest, 20,000 viewers. Wow. You know, we, uh, we have to talk to the Attorney General about that. But that, that's pretty good, 20,000. Man, people are interested. So if people are interested, maybe we look at it. Follow up. Okay. Um, also, yesterday you were talking about... Um, it's, uh, it's testing teams going into Niagara into the agriculture community to uh, test workers. Um, I'm wondering if you could give more detail on that and, and why it's being done, where it's being done, and are you worried that there could be a, a, an outbreak again in, in, in Niagara among uh, agricultural workers? Well, within uh, the agricultural industry, we've, we've seen what's happened down in Leamington and, and Kingsville and uh, another big area is Niagara, so we just want to make sure it's better to be safe than sorry. We want to make sure we go down there and we communicate with the uh, temporary workers, make sure they're safe. That's, that's the number one priority. Make sure we communicate that they aren't going to be sent home. They're going to be treated like any other uh, uh, resident of Ontario. They have to have a safe workplace, and for any reason they, they can't work, they're eligible for WSIB. Uh, they're also... Uh, eligible for any benefits through the federal or, or provincial government, uh, no matter if it's CERB, if they worked here last year and they have a, uh, uh, a number, then, then they're going to be, uh, they're going to get paid and they're eligible for CERB. I just don't want them to be scared. Uh, there's no reason to be scared. Uh, get tested, protect uh, your, your co-workers and let's move forward and we'll get through this. We'll get through it together. Next question. Your next question comes from Christina Tanalia with CP24. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier. Hi, Christina. Uh, thanks. I hope you're well. Thanks for taking my question Thank today. You. Um, I know I know you spoke about masks, uh, but I want to ask you about masks in the school settings. Uh, we know that municipalities across the province are trying to make masks mandatory in indoor settings, including here in the city of Toronto, and that will go until the end of September. Now, previously, experts at SickKids suggested that students in school, the younger kids, don't wear masks because yep. they would you know, end up touching their faces too That's much right. and it would be counterproductive. But if older students, say high school students, wanted to wear masks, that shouldn't be discouraged. What is the province's direction on this for students returning to school in September? Well, each board uh, right across uh, the province uh, has the, the flexibility, and that's what we want to give each board, uh, the flexibility to move forward. I understand Ottawa's already brought their guidelines out, and I want to thank the people of Ottawa for moving so quickly. But I want to listen to the experts, and the experts did say exactly what you uh, said. The younger kids will be fidgeting around, touching their faces with a, with a mask, and the experts are saying not to do it. Uh, again, we'll leave it up to the, the regional boards to make that decision. And everyone's going to have different guidelines. I, I found some of the guidelines very, very interesting uh, from Ottawa. Okay, thank you, Premier. Thank you. My next question is for the Minister of Health. Um, yep. Minister, uh, regarding visitors to congregate care settings, specifically retirement homes, we know, of course, of the loneliness and isolation that has permeated these facilities in the last few months. In one retirement home in Toronto, I understand staff members continue to test positive but not the residents. So, of course, that means the home remains in an outbreak situation uh, because a staffer tests positive, and even though the staffer is sent home, uh, that means, as you know, visitors are not allowed to this facility because it's in an outbreak situation. Um, so is there any way around this? Are you looking to relax the policy soon of 
an outbreak in a home means even one staff were test positive because of course this continues to create a scenario of isolation and loneliness for lots of people specifically in this one retirement home well i know that people are very lonely that they have been uh, away from friends and family for a long period of time but of course we have to continue to follow the public health rules the rule is that if there is even one person uh, that has been tested positive that is considered to be in an outbreak situation it's really important and and i'm sure it's it's happening that the, the contact tracing is happening that that's followed up with the residents as well anybody that a staff person might have been in contact with so we want to make sure that everyone is going to be safe and it's not going to be too much longer but we do need to go through that period of incubation make sure that we follow those public health rules do the follow-up isolate anybody that has been in a contact with a staff person they uh, will be tested um, if they're willing to be tested and we need to make sure that everyone in that uh, congregate care facility is going to be safe so we have to follow the public health rules even if it only involves one staff member next question your next question comes from Michelle McQuig with the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Premier. The Association of Daycare Operators of Ontario has issued a letter expressing some concerns about the sector overall. They raise a number of issues, but one of the main ones that they've brought up is the fact that there has been funding promised specifically related to COVID and the shutdowns that have resulted from that. But they're saying that none of that money has flowed as of yet. How would you respond to that? Are, are there plans to get that money moving? Because many of them are yeah. saying that they're on the verge of not being able to make it any longer. So I'll, I'll follow up with the uh, Treasury Board, see when the money's going to be flowing. I know there's uh, multiple em employers right across the, the board, and we just want to make sure it gets to the right place. But I agree. Uh, nothing drives me more nuts when government takes their time when people are in desperate need. But we'll make sure that we, we get that flowing and... Uh, We'll, we'll call you back on that answer. Every every question that I've ever had from day one, we always make sure we get back to you, so I'll find out when that money's flowing and what, what the delay is. Thank you. And on a similar subject, uh, they're saying that most of the daycare, of the licensed daycare operators in the province have not yet been able to reopen, partially because of this lack of funding. Mm -hmm. As more of the province gets back to work, is this news to you that most of the, of the centres have not yet been able to, to open? And they, they, they said a couple of reasons for that. It's not just the money which you've addressed, but they're saying that there's been a real patchwork of rules governing the reopening and that there hasn't been a lot of clear guidance from the province on that front. Well, we've, we've had uh, clear clear guidance like we don't change the rules and uh, I'd be more than happy to get uh, public health to answer any any of the questions but uh, again uh, I, I think we we've been very clear there's there's one set of rules for them and the, if they need help uh, we'll, we'll be more than happy to, to help them uh, on anything and feel free to call the Ministry of Education on that as well but there there's I don't know I, I just find that interesting comment about they're, they're confused about uh, the guidelines. There's one set of guidelines and we'll, we'll help them any way we can to get them up on, uh, off their feet. I don't understand how some can open and some, some are confused. Okay, last question. Your final question comes from Lucas Meyer with News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Thank you very much and uh, happy pre-Canada Day, everyone. Yeah, happy. Um, I think this might be for uh, either Minister McLeod or yourself, Premier. Uh, just to go back to the Blue Jays a little bit, you mentioned that there was more discussion with the Jays today. Um, can you go into what exactly that was about? And you all, there was also a mention yesterday that the health table was looking at tweaks on the baseball proposal. Um, what were those tweaks? What, what else has to be figured out on the provincial side? Because it, it seems like this is a done deal. Yeah, well, what I, I'm just taking the words that Mark Shapiro uh, mentioned to me over the weekend, saying, hey, there's a, there's a few things we just have to iron out with uh, Dr. Williams. I didn't get into the, the weeds with him, didn't ask him the questions. He seemed pretty satisfied. All three levels of government are cooperating, and I'll, I'll pass the, the balance over to Minister McLeod. Yeah, thank you very much. So earlier today I had the conversation with our federal counterpart, uh, the Minister of Heritage, who's also responsible for sport. Um, obviously the, the complication with the, with the Blue Jays is a bit more because it's uh, they're going to be traveling. It's not like the hub city model that we've uh, executed on with the uh, MLSC in the, in the hopes that Toronto will become one. 
So that is the, uh, I guess, the, the, the more complicating factor. Uh, that said, we do have a solid record in this province in opening up our training and conditioning facilities. Obviously, the first to go were our Raptors, uh, then MLS, uh, the Major League Soccer, um, and we're working, obviously, with the Canadian Elite Basketball uh, team at League, uh, as well as the CFL and others, to ensure that we do have the, the most appropriate and, uh, and cautious protocols in place. And so I think that uh, we would be in a good position, but we want to make sure that uh, the Chief Medical Officer of Health is satisfied with that criteria. And again, there is that complicating factor that uh, this would be b a bit more uh, travel related than, than the others. And so that's, uh, that right now is where we're at uh, with our federal counterparts. And, and Premier, if I could just go back really quickly to the masks, is it fair to say that because certain regions are taking their own mandatory approach that for you, any possibility of a provincial mask order is out. Is it fair to say that that's just not going to happen on the provincial side at all? That, that's correct. It's up to each region to make that decision. They have the authority to do it, and I'll, I'll support them on any decision that they, they make. And I have all the confidence in uh, the 34 public health units. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great, safe Canada Day. All the best.